Hey guys, welcome back to another Crane Yummy episode. So today I have made a pillager farm. I mean, not a pillager farm. I have made a raid farm. Oops, I don't want to drop that down there. Um, so basically this farm is quite small, but it gets you buttloads of loot. Um, yeah, I'll just pick that up I dropped in there. Um, so most raid farms that I've seen on the internet um, or on YouTube have had little way of dealing with the ravages and collecting the loot from the ravages. Um, so I decided to build my own one and see if how much of the loot we can get from them. Um, but yeah, it's quite a small farm. And, oh, if I drop down here. Obviously, I've tried to automate it um, the best I can by killing him, if you want to AFK. Um, but the bad thing is, any way I've tried to kill them, the witches will heal too fast, because they can um, fireproof from the lava, they can heal quick enough for the arrows, they don't take drowning damage and so on, and splash potions, they can just heal and quickly. So yeah, I haven't really found a way to deal with the witches, but this basically works for everything else, including ravages. Um, so basically, if I go over to a thingamabob over here, So over here we've got the um, pillager outpost. You can raid it and everything when you get here. Um, but why you want this here is because you want to kill the pillager with the flag. Right now this is probably the worst example of one. I could have easily made a farm here for these guys, but the way this spawned in was terrible. Um, but yeah, you want to kill a pillager with a white f with the flag. <coughs> Oh yep, there's that guy that we wanted to kill. And now we've got Bad Omen. Bad Omen is the effect that when you go into a village, um, it will start a raid. So for a village to be classified a village, all it needs is one villager with a bed. And then it'll start the raid, because that's all I've got here. And this guy will start panicking. Um, so to show you the raid, um, I will just show you how this works, this farm. So we've got the horns, and here's the first wave. Um, yeah, so these guys are coming slowly over here because that's where the villager is. They're always drawn over here. And as you can see, they walk straight in. Is my game frozen? Yeah, I think it froze for a sec. Um, but yeah, they walk straight in here. No problem whatsoever. Sometimes they do have a little bit of trouble getting in, but they sort it out eventually. Um, mainly when there's a player up here and they're trying to go to it, but if I just go away, they'll have no problem whatsoever falling in. So down here we've just got them where they end up, and I've got the lever here for lava. You don't have to use that. Um, but yeah, that just kills them quick enough. And all the loot gets picked up in here. And I'm just going to use this to show you how it gets the Ravager's saddle when you kill it. Because obviously a saddle, a saddle is a um, decently rare thing to get. You can't, as far as I know, you can't get it from trading, and it is only obtainable in loot chests. Or by killing a ravager, which this farm is perfect for. So if we just watch these five go quickly in, um, this wave didn't actually have a ravager, which is kind of annoying. I'll just kill him. 
This farm's also good for getting you emeralds, which is a good benefit of it, as well as some totems of undying. Okay, then. This next wave should have ravages. Uh, yeah, this one's taking a while to load, so it should have ravages. Yep, we've got a ravager here, nothing riding it. Um, but yeah. So it's a good way for getting crossbows, emeralds, and saddles. You can also get arrows, um, axes, totems of undying, and so on and so on. It's a really wide loot table for this farm. Most of them are quite decent stuff. So if we just watch here with the Ravager, he is going to try and walk in. Uh, yeah, and then he catches on fire from the lava. Um, he's not doing as much because before I didn't even remove some of them to test it, but I didn't actually end up testing it. So I think that's why. But he started to die. They do have a really high level. And he just died, and the saddle just went straight down. So it picked up the saddle, as we can see down in this chest here. We've got the saddle there from the Ravager, and we can just come down and kill the rest. No problems having to deal with the Ravager. So what I meant earlier when I said I removed some stuff, I had um, trapdoors all here. Um, and the way the guys were acting, it didn't need, they don't need them there, but having them there does increase the chance you won't get the saddle, but, um, having them not there will also, um, kill them slower. So it's up to you which way you want to do it. Witches obviously have the biggest loot table of them all. We can get glowstone, um, dust, sugar, gunpowder, and sticks. Um, yeah. So most of these things will get you a w really wide range of loot. So this farm's basically perfect for any thing you need. And it's, the good thing is, all you really need is a pillager outpost and a decently flat land for it. Uh, but yeah. Oh, there's probably one guy about to fall down from up top. And this completely does rely on them having their pathfinding. Uh, yeah, witches are always the slow ones. I think this one must have seen a villager over there and chased it. Um, but yeah. And at the end of it, you do get the hero of the village effect, which you can use to get some really good trades with the villagers. Uh, he doesn't have a crafting thing. Um, we'll get a smoker. Oh no, we'll get a left turn to trade with him. We'll just place that down there. And now they can't take up upgrades. They can't. Um, thing in the raids. But yeah, let's just try to kill these guys. The only thing that really does stop them from pathfinding straight into here is the player being outside. So down here they will get straight in the way of them getting to it. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So do we have another thing? Oh yeah, we won victory. And then you get the hero of the village effect. And this guy should stop panicking in a sec. Just pretend I didn't do that. Okay, here's your turn, buddy. Come on. Come on, it doesn't have to be that close, does it? Don't want you dying here, buddy. 
Oh yeah, there we go. So the lectern's there, and only nine emeralds and a book for a sweeping edge two instead of fifteen. So that's a pretty good trade. Um, but yeah. So over here, I've been doing a little bit of experimenting with um, the way the ravages work. Um, so if I put a villager down here, and we've got one here. So this is basically the way it's set up right now. Let's check down some villages. Uh, I need a slab. If I put that there. Oh, that's the wrong place. Okay, well, they know that the village is there and they just wander in here. And you can kill them. So that's the way the pillagers and bakers and that work. Oh yeah, another raid starting, doesn't matter. Um, a ravager will also just come across here, which is the bad thing. Um, so I'll just come in there. If you have more than one ravager, most of the time they will fall in. But yeah, that's the annoying thing. But when I put it on the curve, they seem... Well, when I put the lava above them, they seemed fine dying. If I put some ravages down here, in this wider one, they will get you one corner, because it's the easiest path I could cross. When I did the three, but when I did the two, they just tried to run across like the villages. Um, but yeah. If I just chucked a bunch of pillages here, they will just wander straight in. To the <laughs> so you can use these mechanics if you want to design your own. Yeah, that's basically how they, they work. Um, but yeah, let me know if you want any other farm tutorials. Um, this thing was fun to make. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe and watch out for more Crane Gaming episodes. Bye!